For me, love, love is a risk. Love is always a risk. I won't forget what Cliff mentioned to me before. He wanted to build our marriage on a foundation of faith and not fear. When you first contacted me on, you know, on, on my blog, I, right? I did not contact you. Yes, you left me a comment. <laughs> so, so what happened was that, like, I, I read her blog and I read about her, and I was like, it doesn't even seem practical. But I guess that's how what it means to fall in love because, like, I just think, wow, it would be great if we can get together. But then she she was in Singapore, I was in Toronto in Canada, and I, you know, I was never planning to go to Singapore. I didn't even know where Singapore is. I'm gonna Google and find out. Oh, it's an island, in, you know, near Mal in Malaysia, around Malaysia. So, <laughs> okay, to set the record straight, like I did not contact him. I found his blog <laughs> by accident because yeah, at that time uh, I was doing yeah, triathlon. Accident. I found his yes. blog by accident, and then I just left a comment that, oh, you know, your life is very inspiring. I did not contact. Yes, him. then you left a I message. I was not looking for a relationship. You left a comment. <laughs> no, 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 but you wasn't. But you just left a comment, and, and that really started out like how we get to know one another. Like, I mean, we started to write back and forth in emails, you know. From her side, she would be like, yeah, this guy writes to me every day. Oh, but then she also write back, so if so she write back, <laughs> I write back. You know, and then sometimes I write more, but... And it was so amazing to see how, like, what her life in Singapore and my life in Canada, even though we don't, don't, do not know each other, we have no, like, you know, people who say, oh, there's like six degrees of separation. There's no, like, we're not even close to one another. Connected. No mutual friends, no, no nobody. Yeah, we're not and yet, our life is very similar. I don't know how it works out, if it works out, mm -hmm. but it just really started me to be like, you know, if we, this con conversation continues, if this friend or relationship continues to grow, she'll be the one, and I will not hesitate. Well, I didn't think that way. <laughs> so what do you think? <laughs> so cheesy. I just thought that there was such a sincerity in his life. I Personally, I was just inspired by him as a distant figure because he had liver cancer when he was very young and then after that, he decided to do an Ironman event which is like a super mega long triathlon event and I'm thinking to myself, wow, this guy is really crazy but after that, I think what inspired me more was that he was in the process of kind of, you know, giving up his life his comfortable life in Canada to, you know, explore ways on how to help the poor not just in downtown Toronto where there are a lot of homeless people but also like overseas and that was, you know, kind of kind of dovetail with what I wanted to do with my life but I wasn't thinking like we could get together because it's just it just so sounded crazy. so ridiculous yeah. while we were connecting one another I connect with another NGO and so I met up with one of the director in Canada and he told me that you know we have based on your skill in IT and what you want to do we actually have a position for you of all the places they send me they say yeah well we need you to be in our headquarters, which is in Singapore. <laughs> then I was like, And they have oh. offices all around the world. Yeah, right? they have offices all <laughs> around the world. I was shocked. And I was like, wow, it's not like I just want to go. It's like, you know, I'm being sent it's, over there. It's divine. Yeah, it's divine. Yeah. I think when, when he came and, and we realized that, wow, it, it, it feels like it's meant to be. People were accepting of, of, of Cliff, they were accepting of this wonderful, kind, sincere stranger who had just walked into my life until several months later when he was writing to me, he actually said that he had encountered a liver crisis. Um, his liver numbers were going crazy and that the doctors couldn't figure out what was going on and they did all these tests and a biopsy on him. And I just thought to myself, like, what, what does this mean? People started telling me things like, you know, are you are you really sure you want to marry Cliff? Because he's, they called him a high risk individual, <laughs> and uh, that that really bothered me. <laughs> and they just kept asking me like, you know, you're you're a medic, you got you're a medical person. I mean, you, you should know better. You you, what, why why are you why are you marrying why are you marrying Cliff? And so when that liver crisis happened, I I felt, I know this right. sounds weird, but I just felt like. I just felt, in a way, God was challenging me to really think about what faith meant and think about what love is. And that's why, for me, yeah. love is a risk. Right. Because I wasn't sure if he was going to live like for a few months or for a lifetime. But at that moment, I just knew that he was the right person. Right. 
And I remember praying such a such a prayer of desperation. I just I just said, you know, um, you know, I I pray that that Cliff and I will be married for three years. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're married for how many years? Six years. <laughs> More than three years. Yeah. And yeah. and we yeah. have a a little girl yeah a little one and a half year old yeah. girl and we have another one coming soon yeah, we have another one yeah. coming soon <laughs> yes, yeah so that's yeah. been exciting we decided to take all the money that people give us for our wedding and we decided to help an NGO in Cambodia right and also in Kolkata and, too in, Kolkata, yeah, yeah. In, in India and in Cambodia to help stop child sex trafficking you know we have friends and people telling us you know oh you know like you should be more practical you should save it up which is practical you know you should save up yeah. and you know and so and we had to really make a choice yeah. and we really felt like you know what let's just take that risk and help others yeah. who cannot help themselves so the night before the wedding <laughs> i had such yeah. cold feet because yes. you know people realized that we were actually serious about this at first we were just talking about an idea yeah. and then now they realized that the night before yeah. the wedding we were still on it and and they were like you're gonna give every cent away and I'm, they were like yeah what's wrong with that and people started telling me things like you know it's it's really bad to start marriage on the wrong foot like it wasn't even like you know, inauspicious, but it was just impractical because, you know, you yeah. guys will have so much financial stress, it's just bad for your marriage. So, at the end of the day, we had to make a decision and I had cold feet. I actually asked Cliff, I'm like, Cliff, you know, like, do we do we keep like maybe $2,000 for ourselves? Yeah, just, just keep some, just, just keep you know, some, cover like 10%. The, at least cover the wedding, wedding venue yeah. and the food or just a little bit of the food or, or something like that. And Cliff, Cliff said this to me and I will never forget it. He has... I don't... <laughs> he doesn't remember the wise things that he says yeah, sometimes, but, just... but he said, I want us to start our marriage on a foundation of faith and not fear. It made us realize that this was the beginning of a journey of radical faith. $60,000 was raised yeah. from the wedding and I, um, I published a book called I Love You yep. and that was used to thank our guests. It was like a wedding favor in a way. Um, and so that book together with the wedding it raised funds to build two buildings, one in Cambodia, yeah. one in Calcutta. And both are, in a way, social enterprises. So one in um, Cambodia, it was, it was developed into a boutique hotel and it kind of retrains women who have been rescued from sex trafficking and giving them new livelihood skills. Yes. And the one in Calcutta, um, it's, it's similar in a way, but it's a soap factory. So it retrains women, gives them new skills. And when we look back at what happened, there are times where we wonder, oh, you know, we could have used that money yeah. for ourselves, we could have done something with it. But then when we hear of the lives that have yeah. been changed, the it's women amazing. who have been rescued, the, the kind of stories that they tell, yeah. saying that, you know, they've gotten a new lease of life, they've never had to go back. Yeah. They can, you know, help their children. Yeah. They don't have to go back to a trade where they don't have any dignity. Yeah. But now they can, they can look at life with joy. Yeah. I think when we hear those stories, we realize that, yeah, it's it's yeah. it's more than worth it. Sh shortly after we got married, within the year, we kind of decided that we wanted to Take serve. Bit, yeah. yeah, we wanted to away. serve um, the underprivileged, and we had you know different options, but it seemed like the door was open to Uganda, and for us, it was it was such a crazy and in yeah. a way stressful decision. But we we knew it was the right thing to do, and yet you know again. People were saying the same thing that, you know, you should wait for yourselves to settle down first, you know, make sure that your marriage is stable before you move to a new place because, you know, it can, it can weaken your marriage. Time is short. Yeah. Like, right Time now I'm 38 and I'm a transplant for like 20, almost 30 years now. Yeah. And we don't know how long that will last. Yeah. And so every year gone by is every one year less that I have to get to yeah. live. Because of my liver transplant, I cannot take certain vaccinations with like yellow fever, for example, which yeah. is co common in Uganda, it's possible. And then yeah. malaria, all those diseases all affect the liver. Yeah. And so there's, there's that risk uh, that, yeah, that we have I, to navigate and understand uh, and, and process. I, I think she processed more than me because yeah. she's a medical doctor, but yeah. I was so stressed out because yeah. like my colleagues at work, they were telling me, they were telling me, th I mean, they, they were very well-meaning. They, yeah, they, they were care. very well-meaning. Yeah. They care, yeah, they care. But then, 
<laughs> Someone made a comment and said that I was medically irresponsible to allow Cliff to go to Uganda. And that stressed me out so much because I realised that this was for real. Like if I lost my husband, I started to ask myself, you know, would I become bitter? Would I blame would I blame God? Would I blame myself? Yourself, yeah. And there were actually a few nights where I woke up with panic attacks because I actually it became real to me that I could actually lose my husband. Yeah. And so it was a decision where we really had to count the cost and we had to weigh, you know, the practicality of it. And I remember one day we actually took out a world map and we said, you know, let's just look at, you know, places that we can serve in without such a high risk. So we wanted to be wise as well. But, you know, no matter where in the world we went, there was some sort of a risk. There was something going on. There is no 100% safe place, yeah, you know, except where you consider home. But, and so that kind of made us realise that, you know what, we, we can't we can't measure, we can't base our life's decision based yeah. on a statistic. We, we just cannot. Yeah. And so we took the step of faith we went yeah. and um, it, was, it was wonderful. When people hear our story, they'll be like, oh, you know, this is a great love story. You know, it's like a fairy tale, this happy ending ever after. Love is risk, but love is also hard work. Yeah, and, and, and it's true that love is a commitment, it's not just a feeling, because feelings comes and goes because when you commit, you're committed to one another. And the cross-cultural stress really magnifies yeah. a lot of problems and issues and small conflicts can, can easily swell. Yeah. Bigger conflicts. When he asked me to marry him, I, I actually hesitated because I said I don't want to bring my baggage into the marriage. And I was worried that, you know, my previous history with depression or eating disorders and, you know, my struggles with... Um, you know, different things in family. I, I didn't want to bring it over into our relationship. Part of it was due to what I had carried before in my individual life before I had met Cliff. And I remember one day in Uganda, we had such a bad argument. I, I don't know what we were arguing about and I'm so sorry, but and I took... <laughs> so I took the soup ladle that I was cooking soup and with. Threw that <laughs> I opened up the door and I just threw it across the field in front of our house. Oh and that my was, goodness. And what happened and, next? And then I went totally hysterical because, because in Uganda, it's very hard to find replacement for things. So I told Cliff, that is my favourite soup ladle. It's my favourite soup spoon and now it's gone. So I, I think somehow that night we made up. Oh and so the next morning, there's still a missing spoon ladle. So what did I do? I drove my car, go to the other side of the field and start looking for this spoon ladle. Like bushes like and trees. Bush, yeah, bushes and trees. I'm talking it's about a field with like grass almost up to your shoulders. Yeah, with, yeah, like, it's, it's, with like yeah. mongooses and snakes inside. Yeah, you yeah, can't so, see where yeah, you're going. Yeah, and yeah. he was just there. So like, look for it. And he, he didn't so. tell me what he was doing. He just said, I'm going out for a while. So I end up going to the grocery <laughs> store and grab another Super ladle. Yeah, super yeah. Yeah, yeah. ladle. Yes. It wasn't the same. It wasn't yes. exactly it what works, I like, but, <laughs> but, then, but, but then I was very touched yes. that, that he, he did that. One of the ladies from Uganda would say that if you drop a button in the in the soil, it will grow into a button tree. Yeah. Because the soil is so fertile. That was the example that she used. Mm. So so we joke around that somewhere in that field. There's a spoon tree. Yeah, because it's it's probably somewhere in it, you know. So That but, represents yeah, our love. Yeah. But but that mo <laughs> <laughs> Most amazing thing about that is that, you know, even though we're far and whatnot, it's not like it's not it, it's bad, but it, but there's a good coming out of it. I feel like by the time we left Uganda, we were, you know, I I told Raja that like there's nobody else I want to be out somewhere other than her. I'm not saying that everybody gonna go to Uganda to have you know the experience how to build <laughs> a strong marriage, yeah. but I felt like in the past couple of years. Yeah. You know, we it's don't, hard. yeah, it's been hard, but we also grow together mm -hmm. even more. Yeah. It's interesting because we've, we've been in a relationship where we've moved maybe over 20 times in the past six years over four countries. And it's, 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 it, it gets stressful <laughs> sometimes. It gets stressful. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, I remember I would ask Cliff, I'm like, you know, after, after that incident or after that yes, argument, yeah. like, how could we possibly be together? Like, some, some things it should leave a scar. Right? Yeah, like how, yeah. how can we possibly move on? Yeah. But he has such a different perspective. One day he just told me, he said, 
it is precisely that we have had those arguments, we have gone through those trials, we have, and overcome. We have fought like that and we have overcome. And that's what makes us special. It's that, that's what makes marriage worthwhile. That's what makes our love worth fighting for. Yeah. There are times I have gotten so angry with Cliff. I just wondered to myself, you know, how am I going to live with this man? But then, <laughs> <laughs> but then I think about, I think about what he's gone through, and I think about the fact that his life is, in a way, a second chance. Mm. Yeah, and I'm when I think about how grateful I ought to be for the life that he has, I, I'm, I'm just filled with gratitude. Yeah, and, and now we've been married for six years, and. You have no health complications? No, I have issues. I'm, I'm living longer. <laughs> <laughs> when we look back, when we first got together, I, I don't think neither of us really expected how our life is turned out like this. <laughs> yeah. Mwah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay.